In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So we come today to the last, the last Sunday of the liturgical year. So uh, it's like New Year's Eve. And uh, next Sunday is the first Sunday of the new uh, lectionary liturgical year. Uh, it's the first Sunday of Advent. And so in some ways, and see if you can and st stick with me here for a minute, we come to the end so that we can get to the beginning which is focused on the end. So let me back that up a little bit. We come to the end of this year so that next Sunday we can get to the beginning of a new year and we're focused on the end. On the end. We're focused um, on the time between the first coming of Jesus at his nativity and the second coming of Jesus when he comes lo he comes with clouds descending in triumph and in power as Lord of Lords and King of Kings often this day this Sunday in particular is called Christ the King Sunday precisely because of that precisely because we're waiting we're waiting once again um, for Christ to come So I thought it might be fun to play with some images. And the first image, first image is Jesus on the Mount of the Beatitudes. Way back in chapter five, 20 chapters back in Matthew's gospel. He sees them, he goes up a mountainside and he begins to teach them. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Some of those some of those images sound familiar, don't they? Hungry, thirsty. When Jesus is teaching here in the fifth chapter. He's giving his disciples, he's giving us an opportunity to see those words, to learn those words, because pretty soon we're going to see those words. We're going to see those words in his life. We're going to see how he takes all of this that that he's teaching and he's going to live it out. He's going to live it out. He's going to embody it. Lo, he goes. In the first chapter of Acts, we see that moment when um, when the disciples, the eleven, gather with Jesus. Judas is is, no, is out of the picture. Judas has already betrayed, and he is no longer part of the twelve. So the 11 have been walking with Jesus for 40 days during his his Easter life. And they come to that place. And it's time for Jesus to go. And 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 the gospel, uh, the, the, the Acts writer Luke tells us, you know, while they while he was going, they they were watching. He was lifted up. He was lifted up. And he was taken up. By a cloud. It's quite a sight, actually, when you think about it. And they stood there. The eleven, they stood there. They just stood there looking up. Just stood there. And then Luke tells us 
that two men in white robes came and stood by them. And they said, what are you looking at? Why are you standing here? Okay, yeah, he's gone. It's Jesus. He was taken up. Yep, for sure. And he's going to come back the same way. Lo, he goes with clouds ascending. And lo, he comes with clouds descending. But it's time for you to move on. It's time for you to get busy. And then Luke tells us, the writer of Acts of the Apostles, right after that scene, the very next thing, they replace Judas and they get about their ministry. So I have to say that sometimes it is really, really comfortable. It is really, really comforting to think about to think about where we're all going to be. And, it, and when, when we experience lo a loss, whether it's a family member or, or friend, we're reminded we're reminded sometimes we don't want to be reminded, but we are, you know, that that heaven awaits us. That a better life awaits us, that eternity awaits us, that a life without struggling and, and challenges and pain, a life without death awaits us. But here's the thing. You and I, you and I are not allowed like those like those 11. We're not allowed. To just stare away at heaven. There's something more. He's coming back. And in the meantime, there's work to do. There's work to do. What Jesus taught us back in the fifth chapter. And what Jesus did between the fifth chapter of Matthew and the 25th chapter where he says this. Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? Hunger and thirst. And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Jesus isn't just um, identifying with the poor, the hungry, the thirsty, the naked. He is in each one of them. This is one of the great, the great mysteries of the church. This is one of the great mysteries of Jesus. And when we look into the face of the sick or the, the hungry or the thirsty, when we look into the face of the prisoner, when we look into the face of a stranger, we see Jesus. And let's get this mystery really cranked up. And when they look back, they see Jesus in us. There's going to come a day when we look up to the heavens and lo, Jesus is going to come with clouds descending and what a glorious sight that will be. But between now and then, in this, in this liminal place that's already but not yet, if we want to see Jesus, all we need to do is look into the face of the least of these. 
All we need to do is look into the face of the least of these. They're part of God's family. Christ's image lives in them and we and, and Christ's image lives in us. And when we see each other as opportunities to meet Christ face to face, then all of the barriers and all of the, the reasons and all of the stuff that keeps us from each other, that can go away. Because when we look at the face of the least of these, when we embody Jesus' love as we move among them, then, then God's glory will be revealed. And it can be revealed right now. We don't have to wait. We don't have to stare at the clouds. All we have to do is see the face of Christ and love the face of Christ in those around us. Amen.